Hi, this is Roger in Finland and today we're going to take a look at the Canon Legria HF M406, which is possibly the best camera in the world for me. So for the impatient ones, this is a compact camcorder that has a flip out screen. It has a dual card slot. It shoots up to 1080p at 25 frames per second, up to 24 megabits per second. It is stabilized and it has a 10 times optical zoom and it's old. So why is this the best camera in the world? This camera 10 years ago captured what is one of the most beautiful and best days of my life, my wedding. Before getting into some more details, one point about this video is capturing the moment with the correct tool is way more important than having the best camera with the best lens and the best biggest sensor and the most frame rates and the most bit rates and the most expensive lens on top of it etc etc yes there are many better cameras than this one also 10 years ago but this was perfect for the job and that's what mattered when i said perfect for the job please don't go up in arms i don't mean this as a working filmmaker, wedding videographer tool. I follow a few wedding filmmakers because they are actual filmmakers and they have very interesting things to say about gear, which I'm interested in. And I don't know how is it nowadays here in Europe or in general, but 10 years ago for us definitely was not an option to hire a filmmaking crew with expensive gear to do that. And my wife has the idea. Why don't we get a, a video camera? Because we didn't have any, pretty much any camera at that point. And my wife had the idea, why don't we get the video camera, bring it to the wedding and ask if somebody would like to take some footage time to time and maybe we're going to have some memories from it. And not only this was a good idea, but fortunately 10 years ago I knew nothing about cameras or filmmaking or making videos, so we went with this camcorder. Imagine a situation like now I'm trying to explain to a friend, yes, hell, well, here you have the Zcam S6, which is what we're filming right now in, by the way, for the nerds following the channel. This is how you turn it on. This is the monitor so you can see something. Remember to expose correctly. Do not clip the highlights, but please expose a little bit to the right, but not too much. Um, you can load a lot into the monitor if you really want. And remember to also um, record the audio separately because this camera doesn't record audio correctly. But anyway, a separate recorder is going to be necessary. And I can immediately imagine my friend looking at me in the eye and saying, uh, just use my phone instead. But because I knew nothing, we just got a camcorder that has an automatic mode. Therefore, the threshold for anyone to take the camera and take some footage was really low and it happened. And what we got in the end was way more than we expected. We got all the ceremony, all the speeches, the first dance. Our friend really did an excellent job. I did manage to edit it all together, which was a nice thing because most of my family were not able to come to Finland for the wedding and therefore they could enjoy it afterwards. They told me that they enjoyed it, okay? And of course, as with all reviews I do in this channel, I try to use the gear I'm talking about, so... Can you have luck with it? Well, I don't know. They tell me. Framing looks okay. The sun is shining way too much, so let's go to the shadow. No. Maybe... There we are. So, could you vlog with this thing? Once again, it does have this instabilization. Auto exposure. It does have face detection auto focus, and you tell me how the microphone sounds. Would this be my first choice for a vlogging camera? No, but this is a camera review, so I guess we had to answer that question. Let's move to the Legria HF M406 when I have a rundown of the specs. So this camera shoots 1080p, and as far as I can tell, that's all it does, you cannot go up and down, and you can shoot either with 25 frames per second P progressive or 50 frames per second interlaced, which will be 25 frames per second anyway. Then you have five different selections of quality, which changes the uh, bit rate, and these are MXP, 24 megabits per second, FXP, 17 megabits per second, XP plus 12 megabits per second, SP7, and I can remember 5 megabits per second. If you remember from other cameras, the Sony um, 
A7 III, A6400, etc. Even the ZV-1, they shoot at 100 megabits per second. Then we have the Olympus EM-1 Mark II, for instance, that can shoot up to 207 megabits per second. By the way, the Olympus is the camera that is shooting the B-roll of the Legri right now. Then we have things like the Panasonic GH5, which goes up to 400 megabits per second, which is a little bit more than 24, but we're not really comparing. Then it has three modes, cinema, manual, and auto. We have only used this camera in full auto. It does absolutely everything for you, including, as you can see, one thing to highlight here is that this thing has face detection autofocus. Yes, it did have continuous face detection autofocus in video, on well, this camera, basically a video camera, in 2012. And as you can see, it's tracking me very, very well. Probably it's not making a difference at all because the sensor is so small that I'm pretty sure that the background is in focus all the time, but it works now as it worked 10 years ago. In the cinema and the manual modes, you can use um, program mode or aperture priority or shutter priority. Then it has right now a photo button right here. So if you press it, it actually takes a picture. But even in 2012, I had the Nikon 3100 that that was an actual proper uh, photo taking camera so we never use this and now you can see that this automatic mode will change things so now for instance here there's this little icon of a person now if i started moving the icon moves to a moving person if we put something close by the icon will change to auto it tries to focus it did and it might change into a flower, which means macro mode. And right now it's focusing closely and we even have a little bit of a blurry background. So there we go. The face detection autofocus latched on me immediately and without pulsing here that Panasonic. From a specs perspective, the thing to highlight maybe is that the battery wasn't great. So what we did was basically have the power brick with us all the time and just ask our friends that, hey, if you're not using the camera, just leave it plugged and it's gonna be charging. And that's what they did. And still they managed to cover most of the things we really, really wanted recorded. So it, the workaround worked just fine. Yeah, so now I have the Olympus here. I'm trying to film the screen of this so I can show you things. You can see that the A slot, it actually turned into a yellow icon. That's because now we have only five minutes left because we're filming with the maximum experience or whatever that means, which is the 24 megabits per second. Now we only have one card, but I could add a second one. And now I'm gonna stop this recording and show you a couple of things from the menus. So now, now let me show you a little bit the menus. Sorry if I make some noise because I need to click with my nail because this is a touch screen or a punch screen, you have to kind of hard but there we go if we go to the function there's pretty much nothing just decoration and zoom where you can touch some settings which by the way the zoom is pretty great and it goes pretty far as you can see one two three whoa and you saw how far it went and now let's have it wide open for this shot now, if I put it into manual mode, this will change for a moment, telling me that we're in manual mode. We're still shooting with the maximum experience. Stabilization is turned on and we can see it here. We can still take a picture and we have these profiles. So if I go into functions in the programs, what we have here is either P mode program. So it takes care of aperture and shutter speed, aperture priority and shutter priority and then this scenes that we can change stuff. As we saw with the fully automatic mode, it does it for you, but now it can do it for us. Then now we have the menu option, which will open a lot of more things. And here we have things like exposure for the exposure compensation. And if I manage to go up, microphone level, we can turn the stabilization on and off, etc. And if I open the menu, here we can have a few more options. I'm not gonna go through them all because they're old. You might want to do that. 
And here in the video options, we have the option of frame rate, which is again, 50 interlaced or 25 progressive, so just 25 frames per second in practice, and the recording mode, and now the quality, which is giving us the maximum of experience, the full experience, more experience, some experience, and low experience. That's definitely not what it means, but what the hell. And then there are some more things. And then let's see what happens if I put it into cinema mode. Now it's in cinema standard, which does something different, I presume. It actually went to a low profile, low experience, whatever that was, which means that the settings are dependent on the mode. Anyway, no need to go through much of the menus in very, very, very much detail. The point was to show you it has a touch screen that works well and you can change stuff if you would be in the manual or cinema mode which i would never do with this camera but anyway we love the auto mode our friends love the auto mode so there we go and maybe to show you also the in and out the connection so let's see what it has whoops so as you can see here there's a usb old thing to do something these are actually buttons as well to see the battery information in the screen and then to move from uh, actually filming to viewing the videos and stuff. It does have an HDMI out. I believe that it's only to see what you have recorded. So I don't think that you can use this with a Ninja 5 or anything like that. But it does have a headphones output in case you want to monitor things. And then a component out, which for those of us that are old enough, still remember what it means. So to wrap this up, do I use this camera nowadays? Uh, no, not really. Would I recommend this camera in 2022? Uh, there are much better options that you can find, I'm pretty sure. Would I recommend camcorders in 2022? I'm not sure. Why not if it's the thing that helps you to get the footage that you want, whether it's yourself or giving it to a friend? And did this thing, did its job in 2012? Yes, perfectly fine. Did we have better options or better cameras at that point? Well, we didn't have them, but we could have bought them had the money which it isn't but anyway i don't know if we would have got better results because this camera had a low threshold of usage which means that we got a lot of footage that otherwise it would never have existed therefore this was the perfect camera for that situation 10 years ago and because of that it will always have a special place in my heart and that's why it's one of the best cameras in the world for me because of what it did I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And we're gonna see you soon for some more content, quite likely taking a look at gear, which is a little bit more modern.